Hi, this is Brian Forrester of HiddenIncaTours.com and today we're exploring the Nazca and Palpa lines and geoglyphs in Peru. And this is my book, which you can get from Amazon.com, about the Nazca concept. So here we are driving from Paracas in Peru, which is about one mile, sorry, one hour north of Ica. And we're actually going to be flying from the Ica airport not from the Nazca airport. If you fly from the Nazca airport, the total flight time is only about 30 minutes. But if you fly from Ica, it's more than an hour. So you cover a lot more of the terrain and you get to see some of the Palpa geoglyphs. So first we stop at the Ica Regional Museum, dedicated to Maria Reich, who was the German who preserved the lines for more than 50 years, and she was the great studier of them. And this is a somewhat crappy scale model, uh, scale unknown, of the Nazca system, which is in back of the Ica Regional Museum. But before we decided to actually get into the aircraft at the Ica airport, we decided to take a dune buggy and explore the sand dunes of the area of Ica. These are some of the greatest sand dunes in the world and some people think that actually this area looks a lot like the Middle East, which it does, including date palm trees for some unknown reason. So this is a very fast, exhilarating and somewhat dangerous thing to do. Uh, actually, on this trip that we took, the dune buggy flew off a ramp accidentally, a sand ramp, crashed and broke two of the axles. So that wasn't a very smart move. And uh, we all had to go to massage therapists immediately after this experience. However, if you're a thrill seeker, then I do recommend this. Just make sure that you work with a very uh, good tour operator at Huacachina, which is where you do this uh, sand um, duning. And it's quite a thrilling ride, but unfortunately we had a reasonably bad accident. I would do it again. It's just make sure you find someone who is very conscientious, not the idiot that we had uh, on this trip. So here we're now at the Ica airport and taking off. This was a 12 seat plane and here we're flying looking down at Ica, the city itself, population somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 people. It's a major agricultural area and it's astonishing what they can produce taking into account that all of the water in this area is underground. They have to tap it, uh, tap underground streams and rivers in order to access it. But even the Paracas culture of 3,000 to 2,000 years ago were very successful in terms of agriculture um, being able to access the underground water that in fact comes from the Andes area. So if the Andes and highlands of Peru did not exist in this area, life would not exist on the coast of Peru. So here we're slowly moving outside of Ica. You can see how bleak the sand is. But soon we'll be coming up to viewing some lines and other figures. So here you can see somewhat ancient uh, stream beds. On occasion there are flash floods and so the water comes down from the highlands on the surface and some of it actually makes it to the Pacific Ocean. These long white things are actually chicken farms. So Purdue, or Peru obviously produces all of its own chicken in excess and the good thing about having these farms out in the countryside in the desert is that it's very difficult if one of the farms happened to become contaminated by disease that the disease would pass on to another one of the farms. So again we're looking at ancient stream beds here. And again more of them. 
You see the bleakness of the desert and the um, highlands in the background. Now here again you can see that that's a seasonal stream because there are actually plants growing in the middle of it. And now we're into more of the great sand dunes of the area on our way to Palpa. Some of the largest sand dunes in the world, as I have said, they, they do have um, sand boarding here if you're into that kind of thing. But our pursuit is for some of the lines and geoglyphs of Palpa and Nazca. So here you can see more of the agriculture. Again, the water has to be pumped from underground in order to feed the plants and the agriculture is 12 months of the year. So start to look very carefully for lines. This is the area of Palpa. And these are the small mountains of Palpa. You'll notice some of them are flat. It's on top of some of these flat mountains that we find more than 1,600 small geoglyphs mainly created by the Paracas culture with the elongated heads they preceded the Nazca people. The Nazca people in fact invaded the area and wiped out the Paracas royal family so that's why in the archaeological record we find no elongated skulls during the Nazca period from 100 to about 600 AD. Now some more lines are starting to show up here. Some of course are roads but others are part of the ancient system that were made between 500 BC and 500 AD. The Paracas produced them from 500 BC to 100 AD and then the Nazca made them from 100 AD to between 5 and 600 AD. Now I believe at this point we're moving out of the Palpa area and we're heading towards the great Nazca Plain. Once again, you see seasonal and, in some cases, ancient flash floods that occurred in the area, and more lines are starting to appear. And here again, notice some of the very straight lines. These are part of the Nazca system, which covers hundreds of square miles. Now the unfortunate thing about trying to film is that the glass has glare. There are little cracks in the windows, these plastic windows, so it's hard to get very good video, but here you can see a lot of the so-called runways and lines showing up. So at this point we are now in Nazca proper. And once again, more of the so-called runways going off in all sorts of different directions. Uh, there are many different theories about what the function of the Nazca lines and geoglyphs were, but you have to take into account the two different cultures created them. The Paracas first, and then the Nazca. The Paracas produced much more in terms of numbers of uh, geoglyphs and lines than the Nazca did, but the Nazca created the giant ones that we are more familiar with, such as the spider. If you look very carefully, you'll see the astronaut is on the side of the mountain on the left. But again, it's very difficult to film, even if you've done this many times, in a plane, because it's a very fast trip. But now this is uh, the Nazca area once again, and you can see the runways and the lines going off in all sorts of different directions. Again, there are many different theories as to why they were made and what they represent. In some cases they were ceremonial uh, features such as the geoglyphs. Some of the lines relate to the solstices and the equinoxes. That is the Pan American Highway right in the center of the video now. And what I do recommend is that you watch this video more than one time because the more you watch it the more of the features you will see.
Here again, we're seeing many more of the lines and so-called runways. And again, you see rectangular shapes and all sorts of different things. There are many, many, many of these features. Um, and again, they go from Paracas in Peru, which is on the coast, all the way down to Nazca. So that's a distance of more than 150 miles. And now we're starting to return back to the airport at Ica. See these reasonably massive mountains thrust up uh, in the sand dunes. So you have volcanic activity from ancient times and you also have a lot of uh, the seafloor was actually uplifted in this area. So you're actually looking at an ancient seabed. Then now we're turning to Ica, the city. and getting ready to touch down at the Ica Regional Airport. The only function of this airport is for flying over the Nazca lines and some private planes. So these are related books of mine at Amazon.com. Nazca, Decoding the Riddle of the Lines. I look at all the different theories. And this is the Traveler's Edition. It's smaller, so it's almost a pocket book you can take with you. And these are upcoming Hidden Inca Tours.